Hi everyone, today we are talking about state connections and basically to understand state connections we first need to know that there are mainly two types of them. We have the simple connection also called the shear connection and we have the rigid connection, moment connection. Now in simple connection it's like if you have this building with a system, a lateral stability system that is there to resist lateral forces but for the rigid connection we don't have any kind of such systems it's neither we have bracings or any kind of shear walls or shear cores and in the simple connection we rely on the bracings to take the lateral loads and for the rigid connections or the rigid frames we rely on the fixed joints to transfer both moment and shear force now if we take a close look at the one joint that one joint of the simple connection we see that the joint is made to be as simple as possible and it allows rotation it's not fixed you see this is the beam and this is the column it's not fixed to the supporting column it's not entirely fixed it allows rotation and that's called the simple connection now for the rigid connection it's totally fixed to the supporting column it does not allow any kind of rotation okay so this is mainly the two types of connections simple connection and rigid connection and again it depends on what kind of system you're adopting for your construction if you go for the simple frames then you have to go for the simple connection but if you choose uh, rigid frames then you have to choose also the rigid connections and the reason is i'll try to simplify it here now for the simple connection you cannot really go for the rigid connections inside the simple frames this again can be explained um, by using these two ETOPS models. We have the first one here. It is regarded to be as simple frame with simple connection. And we don't have any negative bending moment, right? So it's simply supported. And you see this simply supported beam is designed to take only the positive bending moment. Maybe small amounts of negative moments, but not that much. And well, I designed this beam to be simply supported, but I cannot go during uh, erection I cannot really fix the joints. If I do so, then I'm switching from simple connection or simple frames into rigid frames. So I'm creating this negative moment. And this beam was not really designed to take such big amount of negative moments. And you see the columns as well. I'm not transferring any kind of moment from this beam to the supporting columns, this one or this one. But you see here we have a relatively bigger bending moment. That's because we have a rigid connection here. So make sure what kind of system you're using, whether it's simple frames or rigid frames, because your connection must be correct. Otherwise, it would be unsafe. All right. Now, when do we go for the simple frames? And where do we go for the rigid frames? Well, that depends. For this kind of structure, or most, most of the structures, steel structures, we go for the simple frames with simple connections. And this is because it is less costly and fast in erection. You see, these bracings here will take any kind of lateral force on the building, okay? Wind, seismic, any kind. And here, we don't have any kind of that system, okay? We rely on this rigid connection, you see? Uh, we have web stiffeners here, and we don't have any kind of bracing here. That means we rely on the beams, columns, the stiffness, and the stiffness of the connection as well to create rigid frames. So. Again, simple connection is easier when it comes to erection, when it comes to, to the cost as well. And for the rigid connection, that depends on the client. If he doesn't want any kind of obstruction in the openings, then that's fine, but it's going to cost more. And due to the welding, a lot of welding. All right, now I'll be referring to the green box. Uh, I'm referring to the Eurocode 3, of course, and for the Eurocode 3 on the UK National Annex, I'll be referring to the simple joints designed to Eurocode 3, and I'm not really going to go through the moment resistance joints, so I'll be focusing on this part only. And you can download these green books for free in the constructionsteel.info. I'll put the link in the description. I highly recommend reading these two books. Definitely you're going to need this book if you're constructing simple frames and for the rigid frames you need this one. This one is a bit complicated and has less number of pages compared to this one. And to start with, I really recommend going through the simple uh, joints. Alright, so the first type we're going to discuss today is the 
double angle web clade. Now to be clear about this, this one is not found in the green book for the simple con uh, joints, but this one was discussed in the previous uh, BS code uh, 5950 and basically it has two web clits. You see, this is the supporting column, this is the beam, and we have this angle web clit and another one. We don't use any kind of welding here. And typically it's 90 by 90. And the thickness of the plate is 10 millimeter up to 12 millimeter uh, in thickness. And the reason is we don't want to make it any kind of rigid. Okay, we want the plate to be as simple as possible. And at the same time, we don't want it to fail. Okay, uh, during any kind of checking. So 10 millimeter. 12 millimeter is just the fine thickness. Don't go beyond it, cause if you do so, then you're driving your connection into more of rigidity, moment resisting. All right, uh, there's one thing here also for the simple connections, not only this one, but all of them. You find this small gap between the column and the beam, and usually because we are allowing rotation, okay? If the beam is going to rotate, we don't want it to bear with the uh, flange of the column. So we leave this 10 millimeter gap, it's either 10 millimeter or a 20 millimeter gap. Now the second type is the fin plate. And the fin plate, if you take a close look at it, you see that we have this simple fin plate, only just one sided, just on this side. But if you take a, a, a back view, you don't have any plate. So just this plate with the bolts. And here we have welding, okay? So fin plate, welding, and the bolts. Uh, we go for the fillet one, the simplest one, and let's go for the third one. I, I might be probably going very fast here, but I'll be coming back to these connections, how to design them in the tech letters. All right, now the third type, flexible end plate. Uh, just to mention this, the flexible end plate, as well as the fin plate, the one I have already shown you, these two are discussed in the green book for the joints, uh, for the simple joints. And for the flexible end plate, if I take a close look, it looks something like this. There is welding and there's the plate. Now the plate extends from this side up to here. And you see the welding is within the beam. It's not with the column. Now for the for, for the fin plate, the welding was or the or the plate was welded to the column. But here we have the plate welded to the beam. Okay? And again, this is the fillet well. Um, we have the width times the thickness times the height. Right, there is one thing I want to make sure of. Now we discussed about the uh, beam to column connection, which is similar to beam to beam connection. But that is not all the connections that we have in a single uh, simple frame construction, okay? You see, we have also column splices because really you cannot extend the beam, or sorry, the column from the bottom up to the top. Maybe the top is like 20, 30 meters, and it has a limit. The column has a limit of its height, say like 12 millimeter, uh, 12 meters, sorry. So we have to connect the lower one with the upper one with a connection called column splice. Uh, the same story repeats for the uh, beams. Beams cannot extend for 20, 30 meters. They must end at one point, and then I have to connect. I have to connect it with the next one. It's called the beam splice. And then we have the bracing connection with uh, what's called the cassette plate. So this is for the bracing. And we have the column base plate. And we have the holding down poles. And well, basically the green book for simple joints discusses all of these connections except the beam splice. But you can find this one in the moment resisting uh, joints, the another green book. So basically, if you take any construction, simple construction, you probably find all of these connections. It's unlike when we talk about um, RCC buildings, where there's just the monolithic pouring of concrete. You don't have to design the connections, of course. But for the steel buildings, that's another story. Okay, you have to design the connections. All right. So let me just go a bit in detail with the connections, simple ones. Now we have this fin plate and we have this flexible end plate. And by the way, for the flexible end plate, we don't have only one type. We have the partial depth and we have the full depth. 
so the full depth extends from here up to here it's the full depth okay but I'm just going to discuss only the flexible end plate with partial depth right so the fin plate and the flexible end plate these are the most common types of simple connections so we have the fitting it's uh, the plate is also called fitting and for the fitting you see the thickness as I said it's from 10 to 12 millimeter and the width usually it's like the width of this one here is like 100 to 200 millimeter and the simple fillet weld it's from 6 to 8 millimeter leg length what I mean by the leg length is that if I want to connect this plate with this one here L distance then the leg length also known as S its notation it's the distance from here up to here which is similar from the distance from here this point up to here okay so 6 to 8 millimeter leg length right the grade of the plate you see the plate is separated from the columns and the beams and it has its own grade but we take the most common type or the most common grade of steel and probably the lowest S275 again that has a yield strength of 275 megapascal with the ultimate strength of 410 megapascal and that's when we talk about a thickness up to 16 millimeter this is up to 16 millimeter if you go beyond 16 millimeter this probably will change okay will be lower and this will stay the same but 16 is way way bigger than like 12 again remember the thickness of our plate is just from 10 to 12 again uh, we have the welding we have the bolts uh, for the bolts we have two types mainly we have ordinary it's called black bolts and we have the preloaded bolts or what was formerly known as HF HSFG high strength friction group we don't want to use this one in our buildings we go for the ordinary okay this is because preloaded bolts are seldom used in buildings for simple buildings usually go we go for the ordinary black bolts now the bolt has grades for instance if I call a contractor and tell them that uh, I want bolt M28.8 what does that mean basically M is for the metric 20 is the diameter of the bolt the diameter of the bolt 8.8 .8 is the grade or sorry the bolt class so we have classes we have class 4.6 up to 10.9 uh, this is recommended by the Eurocore 3 and again if I'm talking about if I'm talking about a connection between column to beam or beam to beam it is usually from 8.8 .8 up to 10.9 and just a small detail here suppose that I have this bolt M20 it has diameter of again 20 millimeter there's this 2 millimeter clearance because I cannot really fit the bolt into a hole with the same diameter so usually for M24 or less we keep 2 millimeter clearance that means the hole is going to be 26 millimeter and if I go for bolts larger than 24 millimeter in diameter we keep a clearance of 3 millimeter all right now any simple joint should not develop significant moment on a small amount act as lateral supports and meet structural integrity requirements let's discuss all of these points three points in a bit of a detailed manner okay now i understand that we don't have to develop significant moment that's fine we, we allow rotation but the next two act as lateral supports and meet structural integrity what do these two points mean exactly now before going through the the last two points first of all we don't want to develop significant moment that can happen if we follow the detailing recommendations uh, given by the court for the simple connections again let's look at the fin plate and the flexible end plate the partial depth one so we have the flexible end plate here the partial depth and we have the fin plate basically we need to do what we need to do here is that we have to keep let me just show you here and right for instance if we take this flexible end plate that is the e1 there's the e2 e1 means in distance e2 means edge distance and p is the center spacing of walls again they are 
certain parameters must be as per the recommendations and given in the green book. For instance, the E1 here is usually we take it as 40 millimeter and E2 here we take it as 30 millimeter. And just for correction, we don't have four lines here. Like we have this one here, one, two, three, and four. We only have two lines of bolts. So we have this one here and this one here. And the P3 is going to be the distance from there up to here. That's the P3. And usually for the P3, it's 90 millimeter, just for the flexible end plate. And usually this plate is around 50 millimeter away from the top of the flange. And there's a reason for this. We'll see it in the next slide. Again, we go for the ordinary bolts. We don't need any kind of preloaded. And usually the recommended uh, diameter is 20 with class 8.8. .8. Okay, now the width of the plate is around 150 times 10. 10 again is the thickness of the plate. Okay, and this is basically the flexible end plate. Now for the fin plate, you see we have this shear force. Okay, the direction of the shear force. And to differentiate between E1 and E2, E1, this one here, is always parallel to the shear force. Okay, so the end distance is always parallel to the shear direction. And E, and sorry, the E2, the edge distance, this one here, is perpendicular to the shear force. Okay, so this is the E2, this distance. And this is the E1. And again, we have the P2 here, just to differentiate between the P2 and the P3. P3 is for the flexible end plate, P2 is for the fin plate. And the width usually is 160 by 10, 10 again is the thickness of the plate, 160 the width. Okay, so we have the P2, P1 as 70, this is the P1, okay, and E1 yeah, as 50, E2 as 50 again, and the distance we keep from here at the top of the flange is just similar 50 millimeter and again the bolts ordinary bolts m28.8 .8. if you find this a bit complicated i'm pretty sure this will get apparent to you once we do the design problems okay so again the first requirement is to follow the recommendations given by the code to make sure that you are within the nominally pinned connection you don't want your connection to be rigid okay Right, the second one is to act as lateral support. That means if you have this I section, I beam, and if I load it as seen, I might probably get to see two possible scenarios. One is that it bends as normally uh, up to its ultimate strength by increasing the load, or it might fail by what's called lateral torsional buckling. This, this is one kind of failure for the particular steel beams. And usually this one happens when the beam is not laterally restrained, okay? This should be avoided by providing lateral supports. Now, how is this even related to my topic, to my connection topic? All right, let me just make it in this way. If you got this T-beam, okay, and you load it, would it be a good idea if you hold it from its bottom or from its top? Now, if you hold it from its very bottom, it might fall up on you. And this is simply because you don't have the stability, right? You cannot really stabilize um, the entire structure here. You know, because you have a higher percentage that it might fall by either sides. But if you hold it near to its top flange, if you hold it from this point and that point and try to lift it, you, you kind of have a balance. So it is more unlikely to fall laterally and Again, this is because of your holding position. Now that simply means your connection will play a significant role for the beam to resist the ultimate loads, okay? It will not fail by lateral torsional buckling, but if you make the connection near to the bottom a flange of the beam, then your beam might fail in LTB, lateral torsional buckling, without reach reaching its ultimate strength. So. That's why you see all the connections, all the types, and all the time, they are near to the top flange of the beam. All right, to the last requirement, meet structural integrity requirements. So suppose you have this structure C building, multi-story, and out of sudden, an accidental 
load or cut to one of the floors. You basically have two scenarios. It's either you lose out of the building large damage or maybe the damage will be contained within the floor within that uh, apartment for instance with a smaller damage and well if you want to understand this that means for this part for this part where the losses are lot this is due to what's called the disproportionate collapse the explosion happened here but the damage extended farther away from the a point of the explosion and for this one here this is not a disproportionate collapse and all of these is regarded as the building robustness okay if your building is not robust that means you're gonna lose a lot you're gonna have this disproportionate collapse right robustness definition as per the Eurocut. so robustness is the ability of a structure to withstand events like fire explosions impact or or the consequences of human error without being damaged to an extent disproportionate to the original cause. And that's what happened in the Ronan Point Tower block in London in 1968. One room had a gas explosion and the building lost its entire corner. One entire corner due to the explosion happened in just one room. So this is a catastrophic loss for both humans and properties. All right. So how do I deal with that? And how is that even related to connections? If you design your connection, basically for the steel structures, if you have a well-designed connection, then you are on the safe side. Because if you've got this explosion, usually you have horizontal pressures as well as uh, vertical pressures. And this pressure will try to pull out the columns from their fixed location and the beams here must have this tensile resistance it's called tying resistance in order to hold the columns in their position basically my connection should not only be designed to take care of the shear force but as well as tensile force so if suppose my I don't design the connection to take care of the tensile force then the connection simply breaks out and that could lead to a disproportionate collapse your beam or your connection has to resist a tensile force of at least 75 kilonewton now someone might ask how did you get this figure 75 kilonewton well you have to again refer to the code and if you get back to the construction steel.info the website also in the green book there is one chapter for that for the building classifications the 75 kilonewton depends on what building classification you are considering for class 1 we don't have to design it for 75 kilonewton but if you go for class 2a class 2b and class 3 then you have to take a minimum of 75 kilonewton as to be a tying force resistance so your connection has to resist the tensile force in order to be to meet the structure integrity requirements so for class 1 there is no need for the 75 but for class 2 and the next higher classes you cannot go beyond 75 75 is the minimum all right so this is just a very summary of the simple connections and now let's just switch to the glitters and let's have to design problems there and how to use the data provided there in order to check your, your steel connection design for the fin plate as well as the partial depth in plate all right this is the tecla that's 2020 first of all you might need to change the code so it's either you go for the europe or united kingdom and then go to new here in this list you're gonna need to click on connections here and then go to still simple connection design as per the euro code 3 click on it first of all you got this library i highly recommend reading this library because it's very helpful and tells you the scope of the calculation general notes assumptions and limitations stuff like that so click on calculate to start the calculation 
So, all right, you have it here. First of all, you're gonna need to go to the options, design, or here it's just the national annex. So I'm going for the United Kingdom, and uh, again Europe. You don't have to change anything here. That is the structure integrity. That's the tying resistance, and the only thing here is that you have two options here for the auto plate sizing. It's either you go for the first one or the second one. And if you want to understand what that means, is just take the mouse there and read what it tells you inside this box. So I'm going for the second option and then click on OK. Now what you have here is that you have the beam here. This is the beam, your steel beam, and this is your steel column, of course, universal column. Now well, we have two types of connections here. We have the fin plate and we have the partial depth end plate. So let's go through both of them. But first we start with the fin plate. For the fin plate, choose beam to column connection. You have two options, beam to beam connection and beam to column connection. Right. Do you want the beam to be connected to the flange of the column or the whip of the column? Okay. So I'm gonna just choose the flange of the column this is the flange of the column, this is the web of the column. And here, the supporting column. So we have the universal column, what size, and well, you see the D is um, almost within the same range of the B, because this is a, a column, right? The depth of the column is similar to its breadth. So, I keep it the same. You can go for the detailing here. This is everything about this size, and then select and then go for the grade. The most common grade is the S275. And for the universal beams, notice that the depth is greater than its breadth, because this is a beam, fluctual member. It resists bending moment, mostly. So let's go for the size, select. And then, as you might have noticed here, the tying force is already 75. That's the minimum if you go for the class 2A. But you can like go for 50 or anything close to this because 75 is the minimum for the 2A. But if you go for the class one, then you actually don't have to um, provide the tank resistance. So let's like, keep it as 75. And the design shear force, I'm just keeping it the same, 150 kilonewton. Now, someone might be wondering how could you how could you find the shear force right now this is the design of the connection right but if you want to get the shear uh, the end shear force then you can do it by hand you can go for the calculation manually but if you are using etaps or stat pro it must tell you the shear force for any beam you have already designed okay for that now for that that's the analysis part of the program okay it will design the beams it will design the columns but for the connection for instance if it doesn't provide this kind of design then you just need to pick up the shear force from that beam you are interested in and just put it here okay connection details now here is the details of my bolt and the fan plate right I told you in the very beginning there are some certain detailing recommendation that if you follow, you can ensure that the connection, your connection is nominally pinned. As you can see here, the bolt, it's ordinary bolt. They are not even asking you and they're going for the M20, 8.8. But you can choose any grade, but the recommended one is the 8.8. .8. Number of rows, so we have one, two, three, and four. No need to increase it. And well, before going through all of this, let me just show you something very important. Preview results. This is something you have to check in the very, in the very beginning, because it will tell you all the checks, okay? Whether your connection fills in any of these checks, right? Now all are in green now. That means seven passes, zero fail, and zero warnings, right? Go again for the connection, and here 
we only have one line of bold and in distance again this is a spare recommendation so we get 40 here for the for this distance here and this one here 40 and the rest of it we just keep it as 70 and the edge this and the edge this <coughs> and the edge distance here again uh, if you want to understand anything of these just you have to just point it here uh, it tells you what that means exactly and the recommended value for it okay so we give it as 50 here and that was the ball details this is the fin plate details again this is 100 that means this 100 and 10 is the thickness of the plate again it's it's between 10 up to 12 but I'm gonna keep it like 10 and this is the grid of the plate okay depth to plate this is 50 this is the 50 again this is near to the top rather than the bottom and maybe you can change it to say 35 that works but I'm going for the recommended value that is 50 and then you have the gap to support the beam okay this gap here so it's either you take it as 10 or 20 take it as 10 and the thickness it is just fixed 10 uh, weld like size 8 millimeter click on ok it's all good as you can see here what you have to do now is just finish and get the entire report but just before getting the entire report I would just uh, examine the second type of connection that's the partial depth end plate again just the same thing choose the supporting column beam blah 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 the same story go to the connection and you have exactly the same thing that this is the gauge here and it is skipped as 90 so the 90 is this distance here and again go here to get the details and it says the beam depth up to 533 you keep beams that's the recommended gauge distance remember that's the p3 okay and i'm keeping everything the same as per the recommendation also remember this particular test follows the sci it, it follows the green book again the bolt i'm keeping just the same m20 and 8.8 .8 and the size of plate again you have the the list of the sizes go for the 150 by 10 the same grid just keep everything the same and then click ok and there, there you have it all checks nine pass zero fail zero warnings now this is just 150 kilonewton the design shear but you can go for anything higher than that suppose 300 Suppose that you designed it in e tabs and you found the shear force to be 300 kilonewton. Still passing all of these requirements. Or if I go for like 450 kilonewton. Again, all pass. Let's go for something higher. 600. You see, we have one failure here. And the failure is due to the weapon shear. That means I have to change the supporting beam here the size of the supporting beam so suppose i go for this one check it all good so um this is this is in general the the software the tech tests and it's very very helpful and useful so the final thing you might be doing here is just uh, go for the finish and get the full report so here you have the full report and every single detail of it. You go through the connection details. Um, you get this table, okay, summary table for the checks. And you get all the calculations, everything that you might need for your calculation. Uh, it tells you whether pass or fail. So there you have it and they have it all as pass so thank you very much for watching and i see you next time